Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kenneth Ntangeni from the Northwest Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. Soil Science Section, Rochester. My topic for presentation today reads as follows. The effects of tillage practices on soil organic carbon on rains back soil form on the yield of sunflower crop. Under introduction, the first plating, plating reads as follows. Shift in land use, mainly soil tillage, has caused significant changes to soil fertility and soil organic carbon stocks. In essence, that encompasses the introduction of agriculture involving clearing of land, deforestation, slash and burn, replacing perennial vegetation with crops. Under bulletin number two, the con conventional agriculture as opposed to conservation agriculture has been conceptualized as one of the main drivers of climate change and soil degradation. How does that happen? Our farmers, in particular in the Northwest, uses a lot of the multiple tillage plows. In the process of cultivating their lands, um, the fertile topsoil goes underneath and the infertile topsoil comes on top. That alone has got a very negative effect because lots of carbon stock that has been sequestered and the underneath of the horizons tends to emit into the atmosphere and thereafter forming part of the greenhouse gases. The disc plows further decrease by deteriorating the soil structure and texture, leaving the soil much more susceptible and prone to both wind and water erosion. When heavy, say, soil, when heavy rainfall comes after the effect or after the action of the multiple and the disc plows, our soils are washed down the streams or down the rivers, um, causing more silting up of the, of the river bodies or the, or the river ecosystems. It has been estimated that about 100 billion tons of carbon that was originally logged in the soil is lost annually. That is by flood in 2007. Now, um, South Africa is not exemption to low fertility or soil carbon. We've got a legislative framework that guard us against the misuse or the improper usage of our soil as a natural resource. South Africa is a statutory signatory to the United Nations Convention on Climate Change. Um, just as good as we have also endorsed our signature to many other conventions, protocols, treaties, we are duty bound to abide to the code of good agricultural practices, procedures, norms, standards and rules. We are equally the custodians of the program such as sustainable development and other national policies that guard against national resource degradation. Now, in order to remedy the situation of soil infertility and the loss of soil organic carbon through tillage practices, we have made the formulation of the problem into a researchable topic. The problem being the improper tillage practices causing carbon dioxide emission and therefore greenhouse gases. All that alone has caused significant differences in terms of soil quality, leading to soil infertility. After thorough consultation with our farmers, we realized that we need to come up with an experiment that will address the aforementioned problem. Therefore, it was a need-driven research which seek to mitigate the impact of climate change by employing different tillage practices on Rensberg soil form. The objective were outlined in air in order to measure soil organic carbon accumulation. Secondly, to measure soil fertility and yield component on sunflower crop. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the vitic soil tap was used as a test for the experiment where it was found that uh, the diagnostic horizons of the soil was vetic, very dark topsoil, strong structure, very high in clay content with slick and sides, and the soil is inherently very fertile when subjected to the laboratory test. 
Uh, subsequent to the Vitic A horizon was a J horizon, which had a very gray color, low matrix, according to the soil man cell color chart. Um, the soil has underwent chemical changes in the presence of more water and no air. So the anaerobic condition persistent, it was um, been evident by the presence of low matrix color, uh, blue and green tints, and the gray colors. Using the two classification books of South Africa, namely the taxonomic system of South Africa 1991, and secondly, the environmental and anthropogenic system of South Africa 2018, the soil diagnostic horizon gave rise to the soil, to the Rensberg soil form. With RG2000 is a soil family because the upper horizon had the dominance or the persistence of the lime nodules. So it was a bit calcareous. The topsoil was calcareous. Now, table one represents the treatments, uh, four of them, and the first one being blow every year, followed by disc every year, third one minimum tillage, the fourth one being. So the trial design and uh, result analysis method uh, were as follows. Four treatments replicated four times, giving to about 16 experimental units. And each experimental unit was 10 meters by 10 meters. In order to avoid excessive environmental influences, the complete randomized block design method was employed. The results were analyzed using ANOVA as a statistical technique to assess the significance difference using the gen start. Um, in other the experiment, uh, the data was equally collected. Uh, soil samples were collected, the representative one. Uh, top soil was collected at the depth of zero to 300 millimeters, followed by the subsoil collection of the samples at 300 to 600 millimeters. The analysis were done using the pre one and mm -hmm. soil organic carbon was measured using the soil bulk density. The very same results were analyzed in the laboratory accredited by. Ladies and gentlemen, this is table two that outlined the trial milestone activities, starting with stakeholder consultation and up to eight of them. So there was not necessarily a specific order of the sequence of the activities. It all depended on rainfall, um, the activities that were undertaken when the diseases and pest outbreak were encountered, as well as the time period of harvesting, as it correlated with the time of planting. So I wouldn't go through each one of them. They are quite heterogeneous. Ladies and gentlemen, this is table three. That shows us the soil analysis report number 128. So these soil samples were taken in the year 2016-2017. So we formulated the sampling interval of about three years in order to detect if there are any other changes or if there are significant changes. Uh, the soil analysis report has got the lab numbers, sample numbers, the pH, the phosphorus, prey one, which were found to be too low, calcium, magnesium, and texture. The soil was very high in texture, as I mentioned earlier on, that it is about 55 and more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the graph of the rainfall, uh, which was taken at the station called Implants in Rustenburg, station number 10323. Uh, looking at the vertical axis, that is the rainfall in millimeter, and uh, on the horizontal axis are the, tree, uh, are the, 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 the month, together with the treatments. Looking at the most dominating red color tree, um, line of the graph is the long-term average rainfall, which increased with the onset of the summer month and then reached the peak somewhere in December, January, starting to fall um, at a slowing rate with the decline of the, of the summer period. Most interesting here, we see the 2017-2018 graph that was so drastic in terms of its rainfall pattern. It is full of big zigzags, 
we showed the variation of rainfall within a very short space of time. Um, my interest in this graph is 2019, 2020 season. The rainfall was quite significantly low compared to the long-term average rainfall. Um, yes, um, generally the rainfall was of erratic in nature. It came with a high intensity of short duration. Table 4 represents soil organic carbon measurement from 2020, 2016 up to 2019-2020. We see here the standard number was the initial number that was recorded with the inception of the research trial. The only difference were first observed in the year 2018-2019 under minimum tillage where 0 0.10 increased in the year 2018 to 0.11% and increased further in the growing season of 2019-2020 from 0.01% to 0.12%. Under no tillage, the first difference or slight increase in terms of soil organic carbon was realized in the season of 2019-2020, which increased from 0.10 to 0.11%. Now, the following is graph two, uh, the sunflower yield for 2019-2020. Out of the whole lot of this graph, we realized that 2019-2020 had the lowest yield results. Um, the highest being the plow each year treatment with 0.8 tons per hectare, followed by disc at 0.8 tons per hectare, and the minimum tillage 0.7 tons per hectare, and the lowest being no-till under 0.6 tons per hectare. Um, as, as we realized uh, what happened with the rainfall, so there is a trend of the rainfall together with the treatment yield results. Now, in order to determine the feasibility or the economic viability of the, of the treatments, we had to come up with this economic analysis, sunflower yield economic analysis. Uh, as we can see here under treatment number one, yield in tons per hectare was 0 0.8 as shown uh, on the graph above. And multiplying 0 0.8 by the price per tons of sunflower price in August, which was 7,142, we get the value of the total income of 6,356. Then if we if we look at the inputs, uh, the tillage, fertilizer, diesel, seed, agrochemicals, we see here that they all costed about 3,550. So if we deduct 3,560 from 6,356, we get the gross margin of 2,806 rand. Um, the same went down to, goes to all the treatments. The price per ton remained the same. Hence, the difference was with a decrease of the yield in tons per hectare of each treatment. Um, major difference was seen here under no tillage. Um, the inputs themselves remain the same, but the values changed a bit when it comes to the issue of land preparation. There was no cost incurred when it comes to land preparation because it was all zero due to the fact that only chemicals were applied. Uh, under minimum tillage, um, the land preparation cost was quite low of 550 as comparing it to the land preparation under this tillage and the land preparation under plow treatment, which scored about 1,300 rents. So under minimum tillage, the lower incurred cost for land preparation was due to fine tiller, which was used in order to control the broad weed leaves. However, we see a drastic in differences when it comes to the issue of gross margins between, let's compare the plow every year treatment with no tillage. The gross margin of plow every year was 2,806, and the treatment of no tillage scored about 2,078, though there were minimum costs involved 
on land preparations. So these variables have to be measured over a long period of time to see the real changes and the effect of those changes. Now, let's come to the discussion and conclusion of the research. Um, it is a research which is work in progress. So lots have to be learned out of this. 2019-2020 rainfall didn't present any significant amount in terms of quantity and distribution compared to other years. Conservation agriculture is an important component of sustainable rainfed farming in South Africa when tested under different soil climatic condition due to potential increase in cross margin. The research under review deals with the interactive community effects of rainfall and soil biology and therefore it will only make sense when all these variables are measured over a long period of time due to unreliable weather condition, fluctuating climates. Um, to our policy formulators, uh, the word drought relief um, has to be used uh, with climate change relief in terms of their effects. It, it is very difficult, it has become very inevitable these days to draw a distinction between the occurrence of the drought and the climate change effect or climate change phenomena. It has become too difficult. So when these concepts are used interchangeably, or when these concepts are used for the benefit of the farmers, we need to consider, to consider them, whether from the incentives point of view or from the relief point of view. Um, we highly appreciate the investment that the Northwest Department of Agriculture and Rural Development is making because of the rollout of the programs such as no-till implements. Um, training of the trainers is also envisaged as one of the strategies that has to come in order to mitigate this effect of soil loss in terms of carbon stock and soil poor quality that result in soil infertility. This brings me to the end of my presentation and thank you to every one of you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.